Welcome to this even song for the um, Feast for the Conversion of St Paul. It's in the week of prayer for Christian unity. It seemed a good opportunity to pray for all of the churches in our community, both the, um, across the team parish and also the other denominations. And also in this week, which has seen the inauguration of a new American president and that very strong call for unity, which came from that to pray for unity of all peoples throughout the world. The plan had been to record Evensong from Putnam, um, however with only two of us in the congregation um, and a significant amount of snow around, it seemed silly to drive to Putnam um, because um, we were encouraged to stay at home as much as possible and if one had to call the emergency services or a garage or anything because one had slipped off the road one would feel very silly at this time of year when we're meant to be um, doing our best to stay safe. So the best option was to record from home instead. We're grateful to Cliff, our organist, for um, the psalm and also to inquire. We've got an old recording of them singing. Some of the other hymns um, are from the St Martin in the Fields. And Jane is reading for us. Our service begins with a hymn. Let us pray. When the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed, and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do, when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, 
I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much thy devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws, and we have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises, declared unto mankind in Jesus Christ our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and resolveth all them that do truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The appointed psalm for the Feast of the Conversion of St. Paul is Psalm 67. God be gracious unto us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations rejoice and be glad. For you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase. And God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us. And all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verses 1 to 22. Meanwhile Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were travelling with him stood speechless, because they heard the voice, but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. 
so they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him, so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I've heard much from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen, to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me, so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptised, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. All who heard him were amazed and said, Is not this the man who made havoc in Jerusalem among those who invoked this name? And has he not come here for the purpose of bringing them bound before the chief priests? Saul became increasingly more powerful and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Messiah. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. Behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath hope in his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed for ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from St Matthew's Gospel, chapter 19, beginning at verse 27. Then Peter said in reply, Look, we've left everything and followed you. What then will we have? Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man is seated on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or children, or fields, for my name's sake, will receive a hundredfold, and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. Lord, now let us, thou thy servant, depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared in the sight of all the people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God the Father, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O God, who through the preaching of the blessed Apostle St Paul has caused the light of the Gospel to shine throughout the world, Grant, we beseech thee, that we, having this wonderful conversion and remembrance, may show forth our thankfulness unto thee for the same, by following the holy doctrine which he taught, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsel, and all just works do proceed, give unto that, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our anthem is Christ Be With Me.
One of the remarkable things at Joe Biden's inauguration was the Youth Poet Laureate they had. Um, Amanda Gorman, a 22-year-old poet, and she had written the poem The Hill We Climb. Part of the poem says, We close the divide because we know to put our future first. We must first put our different differences aside. We lay down our arms so we can reach out our arms to one another. We seek harm to none and harmony for all. Let the globe, if nothing else, say this is true. That even as we grieved we grew. That even as we hurt we hoped. That even as we tired we tried. That we'll forever be tied together victorious. Not because we'll never again know defeat, but because we'll never again sow division. Scripture tells us to envision that everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. The scripture that Amanda is quoting, of course, is from Micah, and it's that image of um, being united because we're not afraid. Um, often our bad behaviour comes from times when we are afraid um, and that's why we, we need this reminder and call for unity. Um, the church throughout the millennia has been divided um, and this can be both a good and a bad thing. The good of course is that in our diversity we are able to better encompass the, the breadth and the glory which is God. Uh, the negative, of course, is that when we're divided, we have a go at each other um, and we, we fail to, to seek the common good. I suspect at the moment, because we as a nation, we as a globe, um, we're facing a pandemic, we are afraid. And whenever there is that fear, um, then there is the, the danger of, of, of conflict, of disharmony and the holding on to the, the, the vision of a future where everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree and no one shall make them afraid it is, the, is the heart of the, the, the call to unity, um, the, the, the God who takes away our fear, who binds us together. And so on this week of prayer for Christian unity, let us pray. Drawn here by God. Let us bring to him our concerns for the church and for the world. We pray for the whole church. We pray for the community at St Mary's. And we pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ of all denominations across our team parish. And we pray that the church united may be a vibrant sign of God's life in every generation and locality, serving, listening and loving, with the human face of ordinary people lit with the brightness of God. And in these troubling times we pray for everyone in our community and those who particularly need our prayers. For healthcare workers, and for those who are ill. And today we pray especially for Neil and, and all people who are suffering. We pray too that all who are searching for God may realise his closeness to them. We pray for those with a sense of vocation for those who would like to know God more. And we pray that we may become increasingly aware of God's amazing love for each of us until our hearts are overflowing with thankfulness and praise. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. 
Amen. peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>